A while later, well, about two weeks to be more specific, I arrived to my first period in school, and behold, there she was. Helen, what a friend she is to me, I thought to myself. She walks over to me and says that she transferred into the class, which I was, it was of course American history. I looked at her, closed my eyes, and said, awesome. After the bell rang for class to start, we all sat there at our desk listening to the most boring lecture of our lives. After about what seemed to me about an hour and a half, our class was finally over. On the way to my locker, Helen, she called up to me and she said my name. As she stood across the hallway, I turned around swiftly, and then I walked over to her. She asked if I and my family could come over to her house this coming up weekend and have dinner. I said I would talk to my parents when I got home later on that day, and I would get back to her the next day. Further on in that, after I got home, I asked my parents if we could go to dinner at Helen's and for that coming up weekend and mom she was all for it dad on the other hand he wasn't feeling it well he said he had things to do knowing dad was always busy I didn't think twice about it I said to them that I would find out what day and what time on the following weekend the next morning in history class, I and Helen, we sat beside each other and conversed about the upcoming family dinner date. The bell rang and we all in the class became silent. Uh, then he stood up and really all I could remember was is he was telling us about Freemasonry, I think. I actually think I fell asleep like five times in the class, but anyways, the next thing I knew was that uh, I was being woken up by Helen saying, get up, you silly. The rest of the day, it went pretty well. I couldn't wait for the upcoming Saturday. It was to be fun and somewhat of an interesting day. I'm sure of it. At some point on the following Saturday, we loaded up and we drove over to Helen's house. I ran out of the car, threw on my hat, and I hopped out onto their porch just so I could give the door a little knock. Helen, she immediately walked up to the window of her door, and before that I could even touch the door to knock on it, she opened it up and had a big glowing smile and told me to come inside. Well, she actually told all of us to come inside, but all I heard was me come inside. Mom and Dad were still getting out of the car anyway, so Helen's parents came into the living room and uh, greeted us. Her dad took us on a tour of their house, and only to say this, their house was actually nicer than ours. They had beautiful crown molding, a chandelier in the living room, and many old paintings. This was just a list of few. When we came to the kitchen, Helen's mom had already set the table and we all sat down. I looked at her mother and complimented on her beautiful home. Her mother thanked me and then Helen's dad asked us all to bow our heads so he could say grace. After the grace saying was over, we all looked up and Helen was looking directly at me. She had a look about her that told me something was very special about her. I thought to myself, ah, life goes on. I could not wait to see what kind of friendship that we would build as the years went by. After we ate and we talked for a while, we, sat our, we said our goodbyes. And as mom and dad walked out of the front door, Helen walked over to me and smiled again and said, thanks for coming, and then hugged me. I shook her dad's hand and gave her mom a hug. I waved goodbye, and 
and I walked out of the door. After driving home, I ran up to the front porch, I pet Sergeant, and I walked into the house. I noticed that there was a smell of smoke, so I ran out and I got Dad, who was still getting out of the car. He followed me into the house while Mom was staying outside, panicking. He said, where is the smell coming from? remembering the fire that happened years back. And with a short tone, I said, it's coming from somewhere close. The smell wasn't actually coming from inside the house though. Dad and I went out onto the back porch and in the distance, you could see a faint smoke coming from the area that I used to play as a kid. It was starting to get just a touch dark outside. It was the area of the treehouse. I ran down to it and what did I see? Nothing. I saw absolutely nothing. I continued to look around for smoke while dad was standing behind me. I heard a hiss and then saw smoke again coming from the nearby bushes that never seemed to grow. The bushes in the middle of the rock formation. They caught fire and burn up within seconds. Dad ran up to the barn and grabbed the four-wheeler with a large bucket of water. He came back and doused the area of the fire and it revealed the rock with the carving of the sun, which was now red. After we were sure that the fire was out, I went to the house, grabbed my camera and came back down to snap a few pictures. Dad looked at me and said, Son, remember what we talked about some time back? He took the camera from me and then said, We will once again move forward from the things that we have seen. And just like that, I was calm. It's amazing what parents can do. Although, I don't think he heard the hiss, but oh well. The next day, Dad and Mom went down to the rock to replant some kind of bushes around the stone. I heard my dad, with a raised tone, tell my mother that it was a distraction. My blood ran cold, and my nerves were then a little bit off. I went into the kitchen, made me a glass of milk, and then I went back to bed. Today was to be a long day of sleep. The following day in the morning at about six or so, I was awoken by a sound. A tapping on my window. I rubbed my eyes and looked as hard as I could. It looked like to me that someone was standing right at my window across from my bed. I jumped out of my bed and I grabbed my ball bat. I approached the window and it was so dim in my room that the person might not have seen me, I thought to myself, but until I got close to it. This man's eyes were open wide and smiled at me and waved. I threw the bat at him, breaking the window. He actually ran off. All of a sudden, I woke up completely confused of my dream. I thought to myself, For some reason, out of the blue, a distraction. What did Dad mean by that? And what kind of dream was this? That morning was time to go back to school. I was tired. After getting to school finally and arriving to my first period, I plopped down at my desk. And I say plopped down because my mind was still racing from that night before. My friend Kyle, who normally sat in front of me, seemed to be absent. Okay, this... This sucked because he was who I wanted to talk to about this dream or nightmare that I had. Then I realized that Helen was actually there. I would just talk to her later. So during lunch break, I decided to eat outside. I asked Helen to join me, and she said yes. After getting our food, we walked outside to just sit on the grass. And as we were eating, I then told her about my situation. I asked what she thought about it, and she told me that she would 
she would install cameras if she was us. And then I realized what she had said. Though it just seemed to echo in my ears, I thanked her for reminding me of the cameras and that I would be talking to my father later on that day. After I got home that afternoon, I came into the living room to, to prepare to talk to my dad. I thought to myself, now, if it's a dream, then everything would be okay. I would just need to remain calm and just forget about it. However, if it for some reason were real, then I really didn't know what to do. I guess my dad would just contact the police to try to figure it out. So, dad walked into the living room a few minutes later and I began to talk to him about it. He said that he would definitely check the security cameras. He went and checked out the footage and I heard him yell, damn it. I didn't know what to expect. Look, I told myself in my mind that this had to be a dream. I know it was a dream because my window was not broke. But my dad, he kind of walked up to me quickly and he asked me a few questions and then he called the police. They arrived at my home in about 20 minutes. After the police arrived, they too asked us a series of questions and then they left. My dad and I sat down at the kitchen table and told me that we needed to have a long discussion. They asked me, you know, the cops, they asked me if we'd been, if any of us been doing drugs. So dad, he asked me again, son, have you been doing drugs or drinking? I could not believe what he was asking me. I told him no. And of course I know better than this. So then he asked me if I had recently seen anyone around here that I didn't know. And again, I told him no. I blurted out the question to my dad. What did you mean, dad? What did you mean when you said all of this was a distraction? My mom, looking confused, looked at me. She then looked at my dad with a very serious face and said, you need to tell him, honey. Dad said he would and told me to follow him outside. We stepped out onto the front porch and before I could sit down, my dad told me of something that had happened a while back. He told me of of a dead looking Indian ghost thing that had visited him while he was working on his truck. He then told me that the ghost forewarned him that we were trespassing and that we needed to leave. Dad said that he told the ghost no and to leave. Since then, he's been having a few issues, such as just today. While I was at school, he again was working on his truck And while the hood was all the way up, his hands were almost cut off or could have been seriously injured as the hood came slamming down. For there was a screeching sound, then the wind was starting to blow loud, and then his hood came down very quickly. As if someone had slammed it, I think I began to break down a little as dad told me this. I remembered what young Crow had told me about staying out of the area of the rock that was surrounded by smaller rocks. Maybe young Crow was warning us of something that might have scared him to death. Maybe just cared enough as a fellow town person because he feared for me and my family. My dad for the second point told me that then the distraction was because of young crow was right then these problems we have had over the years were only because of something much bigger much bigger dad said much bigger in saying that there could be more to young crow than meets the eye so i thank dad for the talk and then i walked back inside to start on my homework